Bhakti Books and Art booth right near the sanctuary. So this morning, yesterday I gave a talk. I've been giving talks on Krishna consciousness for the last almost 50 years. So this morning, after my talk yesterday, I was thinking I'd love to do one of those guided meditations that a lot of these teachers do. But I've never done a guided meditation. So if I speak next year, I'll figure out how to do a guided meditation on Krishna consciousness. So I think that um, Sridhar was reading my mind because an hour later he requested me to speak on stage for 15 minutes in between the music acts. So I thought, okay, let me do a improvised guided meditation, Krishna meditation. So I don't know if your eyes are supposed to be closed or open, so you can do as you like. And with me is David, who's playing on his flying saucer, so we'll not forget that. Okay. Next time. This is just words. So I'll ask you first, we're going to go from the lowest to the highest. I'm going to ask you first to meditate on a pond. And in this pond, everybody's putting poisons and chemicals. And the fish and other aquatics are all becoming very sick. Now those same people are later eating those fish and other so-called seafoods. And they're also getting sick and dying. So that's called, as you sow, so shall you reap. When we put out negative energy to others, we always get it back. So now again, let's meditate on the pond of the world. Because the world is like a big pond. And let's imagine people quarreling, criticizing, talking behind people's backs, abusing, and speaking all kinds of irrelevant nonsense that's not for anybody's benefit. So this vibration, this poisonous sound vibration, does not disappear into nowhere, just like the poison in the ponds don't disappear into nowhere. It evaporates into the air, and then the sound waves travel throughout the whole pond of the world and pollute the whole world with degraded consciousness of the modes of passion, meaning lustful, longing of desires that are never satisfied, resentment, anxiety, and tamagun, or ignorance, sloth, intoxication, animal consciousness, even though in a human body. So now let's meditate on Krishna's holy names. What that does, this transcendental sound vibration, which is coming into the world through the authorized disciplic succession of pure devotees, that is making sound waves that travel throughout the universe, throughout the world, and if chanted by pure devotees, it travels throughout the universe. To do what? As an anti-pollutant, to purify the whole world, to bring all beings from the lower consciousness up to the mode of goodness, and then finally the mode of transcendence. Why? Because, let's meditate on Krishna, his power. Within one second, he has the power to create innumerable universes, each universe having innumerable planets, upper, middle, and lower planetary systems. Then, 
in the next second, he can destroy all those universes, and in the very next second, recreate the innumerable universes. So he's invested all of his power, all of his beauty, all of his mercy in the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So what happens? Let's for a moment have a paradigm shift on meditating on all the creatures at Joshua Tree, especially the very humorous looking Joshua Trees themselves, who are none other than our brothers and sisters. The trees, the creepers, the insects, the bears, even the attacking animals, the germs, the bacteria, they're not what we think they are with our immediate external eyes that are just like the eyes of what? The eyes of a peacock. Why? Because the eyes of a peacock are very beautiful, but they can't see anything. So rather, now let's meditate on all those creatures at Joshua Tree, from the bacteria to the Joshua trees, to the human beings, all kinds of human beings, with the eye of Shastra, called Shastra Gyan, Shastra Chaksus, Gyana Chaksus, the eye of knowledge. Now let's see them all as pure spirit souls, who, because they hurt their fellow beings in their past lives, or they wanted to be exposed naked in their past lives, Krishna said, okay, stand for 1,000 lives as a tree, or become a bacteria, because they wanted to hurt others so badly. So, it's not that devotees, you all enlightened souls, are not forgiving and benedicting. We want to help those souls. So we chant loudly, the holy names of the Lord, seeing them all, even the bacteria, as our brothers and sisters. And everywhere we go, we chant the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. And then what happens? Instead of taking millions and millions of births, perhaps you've seen my painting over at the Bhakti Art booth, of the cycle of birth and death, where the lower species, once, they, once the soul hits those lower species, it takes them billions of years to come up again to the human form. But by them hearing the holy names of the Lord, because even though they're not aware, even though they can't speak, even though they can't, don't have the intelligence to understand what's happening to them, because they're pure, eternal souls, just like us, they very quickly not only come to the human form, but they have a great opportunity to come to bhakti yoga. Like the particular trees here at this Shakti Fest, why aren't other trees in Los Angeles here? Why are they in Los Angeles? These trees although they did things to become low trees, they also did something in their past lives to become trees at the Shakti Fest. They had some good sukritis and sun scars from previous lives. So, as I always hear Shiva tell every, you've been here every year, right? I always tell him, let the, I always hear from him on the stage, let's do good for the world. Let's have kirtan go everywhere and at all times. Now, let's meditate, eyes closed or eyes open, on Vrindavan, the transcendental realm of Krishna, where every step is a dance, where every word is a song, where the cows give an unlimited supply of nectar-like milk, and where the ground is made of chintamani stones, which fulfill all desires. Where 
when Krishna plays his sonorous flute sound, the cows perk up their ears and in transcendental ecstatic meditation take the sound and Krishna himself into their hearts and embrace him there. Where the rivers hold up with their hands, their wave hands, lotus flowers to offer to Krishna and throw their water up to surround and offer water to Krishna's lotus feet. Where the calves who have been drinking the milk from their mother's udders can no longer swallow the milk nor spit the milk out. But in their ecstasy of hearing Krishna's flute song, the milk just dribbles down the sides of their mouth. Where the mountain there, Govardhan Hill, is a pure, powerful devotee of Krishna, who, out of his loving ecstasy, is supplying from his own breast the fruits and flowers that Krishna and his cowherd friends eat, and is supplying drinking water for Krishna by his waterfalls, and from his own uh, perspiration of his own ecstasy, he's creating lakes and streams for Krishna to swim in. So now, that specially powerful Hare Krishna mantra, we sing it with mood. What is that mood? Oh Krishna, oh Hare, Hare meaning Radha. Somehow or other, although I am your eternal servant, I have fallen into this ocean of birth and death. And I'm suffering here, serving my senses and the illusory material nature, the deluding potency. Please pick me up and place me as an atom of your lotus feet. Engage me in your transcendental loving service so that I can be happy. Then what happens? Let's for a moment meditate on waves. Just like there were sound waves in the pond that get either polluted or purified depending what is our sound vibration that we're uttering. So now let's meditate on big waves at the ocean. Now we may think, I'm just closing now, because the next band is going to be beautiful playing. Let's meditate on the waves. And I'm, the waves are like problems. I'm thinking that if I can just solve this problem, then all my problems are solved. But the next wave comes bigger. But if I simply meditate on Krishna, then Krishna comes and he takes my problems and carries them on his head. I'll end here. Thank you very much. Please come to our Bhakti books and art booth to experience the highest meditation through books and art. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji, for honoring us with your, your wisdom and meditation. Thank you.